It's first, security. Secondly, uh, the south-south, so that we have an increase in our oil production. And those are the two mandates, and, and that he wants us to also work together as a team. He doesn't want to hear stories about him fighting and all this, and I'm sure we've been able to address those issues. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue of security is work in progress. Uh, you know, over time, there's so much impunity in the system, and so that's why it's, uh, it's not something, it's not like a switch where you put it on and you say it's off and it's gone. No, you are dealing with people that have benefited from crime, acts of criminality. There are a lot of people that uh, leverage on that for them to be um, considered as so-called uh, opinion leaders and stakeholders. And so they wouldn't want those things to end quickly. Mm. And so uh, they'll be working and then while we are also working, but um, we're happy that uh, things have taken shape. They'll continue to take shape. We're just about seven months in the, yeah. In Brussels, we are doing everything possible to ensure that uh, we have peace in Nigeria. In a democratic setting now, everything is about the people. Mm -hmm. And the current challenge is also about the people. And that's why my, my concept is about is people-centric. Because if the people are with us, we will succeed. If the people are happy with what our political uh, leaders are doing, the country will be peaceful. And so those are the challenges that we're having. And, and, and I'm happy that people are warming up to it. We're getting all the support for individuals. And this, initially, there are people that were really, you know, uh, skeptical about uh, the approach, uh, thinking that it is all military. I said, no, military can only do so much. The other aspect has to do with the non-kinetic, which we always mention. And it has to do with, like I always said, good governance, fairness, justice, equity. If we have this in place, it will make the work of the, uh, of the security forces a lot easier. Mm -hmm. When people are happy, uh, when people are employed, when people are not hungry, they will contribute positively and then the country will benefit from it. Um, criminals that are benefiting from this will not want it to end. Mm. There are people that are, have been, for all this while, they've been, uh, so they are looking at it now, the new approach, they have seen that it is succeeding and probably they are trying to do their, whatever it takes for them to hold on to what they used to gain. But it's just a matter of time and I want to assure Nigerians that we are positive that change is here. Uh, all those ones, it is like they say, only a foolish um, uh, fly will follow a coffin to the grave. Things have changed. People should understand that, that it is not business as usual. We will not allow any criminals to go free. We will come after them wherever they are and whatever it takes. And I'm happy I'm getting the full support uh, backing from the president who has told us directly that whoever it is that is a part, part of this uh, acts of criminality, we must bring them to book. And I'm happy with that, and that has given us the impetus to continue to do what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, as, as members of the armed forces, our jointness is never in doubt. We work very, very, we discuss on daily basis. We monitor what our commanders are doing, what our troops are doing on ground, and we make sure that anybody who errs faces the music. So we do not hide anybody. Yeah. We want to remain very professional. Yeah. The insurgents, the terrorists, the bandits, and all these things, they're all over. And so it means uh, we have to have concerted efforts in dealing with them. Uh, we understand that when you have a joint operation, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Because everybody has what to present, what is bringing to the table. And that is key and that's critical to our success. We don't want to look as if it is uh, only uh, the armed forces doing this. or the, No, we want to understand that Nigerian uh, security forces are working decisively. They are making results. And wherever we make mistakes, like the Tudumbiri issue, we own up to it and we make amends. There are some things that are beyond you as an individual. Yes. Uh, you are dealing with machines. Uh, machines could make mistakes. You are dealing with weather. Sometimes you even f fire the missile. Something happens and it goes the wrong way. So, you know, but uh, we are, what we are taking steps we are putting in place is now we are training more with our personnel jointly so that we avoid such mistakes in future. And uh, wherever it happens again, we we'll take measures in it. And we are sure Nigerians that um, whatever it was that happened was a mistake. It was never deliberate. Nobody will target. We are meant to defend and protect our citizens, not to harm them. Um, well, the plateau issue, you know, w w the news I got is that this side A is saying uh, we are siding the other one. The other side is saying we're saying, which means we are neutral. If one, only one side was saying we're siding mm -hmm. there, which means there's a problem. And that's why I would have gotten worried. We are political. Whenever we see it, we deal with it decisively how it is based on what we are seeing on ground. We don't take sides with anybody. We only go in after criminals. So whoever the criminal is, whether he's on side A or side B, or side A and B, 
will deal with it. We all know that the armed forces is the most unifying factor in Nigeria now. I mean, if you look at it, everywhere from everywhere, every tribe, religion, every angle, no local government, every local government is, is represented. And so we work together like that. We don't even know these things. It is when people start saying Christian Muslim, we start looking, what does that mean? The only religion we know is army job. Go there, do get the results and come out. That's all. We don't, and when the bullets start flying, they don't choose whether you're a Christian or Muslim. They don't decide. And it's unfortunate because if you see, um, if somebody wants to go and repair his car, he doesn't go and look for a Muslim mechanic or a Christian mechanic. He wants the best. Yeah. If he's sick, he wants the best doctor to treat him. He's going, if he's going to fly. He wants the best pilot. So why did at that instance they're looking at it? We don't, we don't do religion, we don't do tribe. All we deal is we look for who are the criminals that are affecting the issue and we deal with the situation. The president has actually uh, listened to you know, our complaints on the issue of the need to uh, co consider the welfare of one troop. So one, you've never heard of any complaint or anybody saying he's not been paid his salary, yeah, he has missed his RCA or what. We have made sure that those ones are gone. Now the next effort, just yesterday the vice president inaugurated the committee on, uh, on Salary. uh, salaries and wages. So we're hopeful that um, with the outcry, Senator Ndumi and others have actually backed us on the issue of uh, on the need to enhance the payments of, of personnel. I think it's very critical. Uh, we're doing so much. People have sacrificed so much. If a soldier is getting less than 50,000, you know, it's, uh, I think we deserve to have some more. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that everybody knows, understands we do that. And the president, too, is, is also in line with that, so that they can encourage them to do more. And, uh, you know, when the morale is high, they can really, you know, be able to go further to ensure that there's peace. It's, I mean, you saw what we did in the Northeast. Yes. It is because we're there for the troops. We visited them to their locality, to where they stay. We see, they monitor the kind of food they eat. We monitor their welfare, their health. We monitor every aspect. We ensure soldiers go on passes. You saw the introduction of the welfare flight. Yes. Two weeks, aircraft will fly you, go and pick you back. Uh, those are things that was, uh, your training is uh, considered because we want to make sure you get your kitchen as much as possible. We try to make sure you get the right kitchens. If it is cold season, you get pullover. If it is uh, hot season, you get the right uniform so that you can do your work. And I think that has really gone well. You've not been hearing about complaints about lack of weapons or lack of ammunition or lack of water. And all the operations we conducted, we went with all the logistics required for them to sustain themselves all through. And I think that's, that's a good thing. Ability, I, I mean, we, you know, now, you know, what I enjoy now, you see a lot of people really praying for us, thanking us for the job we're doing, and getting a better understanding of what the armed forces stand for. You know, maybe because the, um, in the past, military regimes have come in, so a lot of people have a lot of, you know, um, disdain for the military, and mm -hmm. they feel, no, uh, but they've seen now that our approach, and that's why you see, we try to, uh, meet, yes, just yesterday I was with the Federal Inland Revenue. We, today we had a meeting with the Abuja Chamber of Commerce. All we are trying to do is for Nigerians to take ownership of their armed forces. And that's why we're called Nigerian Army. And when they say Nigerian, it means any Nigerian anywhere in the world that is affected, we have the capacity to go there and rescue that person. That's why it's a Nigerian Armed Forces. So Nigerians must take ownership of it and understand that we're there to protect them. Mistakes will come, definitely, because we're human beings, but it will never be deliberate. People should be proud of their armed forces, and we're doing so well for them. If people know how much we sacrifice, just so that people can go to their, people can go to market, people can go to church or go to mosque, even nightclubs, when people, people don't know that there are people standing behind to make sure that they are able to do that. And that's why I want to appeal, that please try and encourage, support the armed forces, try and encourage them. Thank you, well done. These little things goes a long way in making them continue to feel appreciated. Every human being wants to be appreciated. So if they are sacrificing so much, and then you, the next thing is you are insulting them and all these things, you are demoralizing them. And I don't, want, I don't think anybody wants a demoralized armed forces. Mm -hmm. In the Northeast, sometimes a distance of 10 kilometers will take you almost six hours. Yeah. Because if you make a mistake and step on IED, you are gone. So you have to come down and cover the road, scanning all through together because the roads are not good. If we have good roads, reinforcement, logistics, resupply, all these things, casualty evacuation, will be a lot easier. And it will make it difficult for even the terrorists or the criminals to move around quite easily. But they are leveraging on the fact that the terrain is tight. For you to move takes a long, a long time and it's difficult. It's a very difficult terrain. If one MRAP, almost 30 tons, should get stuck, you know what it takes to bring it out. 
So those are the challenges we're having. Like I said, if we're able to do our own 30 percent and the other 70 percent, good governance, fairness, equity, justice, people's schools will be there. Uh, people are well fed. There's employment. You have reduced illiteracy because some of these things has to do with a lot of illiteracy. So a lot of, and then the issue of social media. Social media now is causing a lot of havoc all over the world. Everybody has the right to sit down and say anything he wants to. So, and we have a few individuals that also try to incite people by their comments. And that's why I want to appeal to all the opinion leaders. You have to be careful that people listen and people listen to what they say. If they go and pass falsehood, people might get killed. And that will be human blood on their own head. So they must be circumvent on what and what they are saying. Uh, we should try and talk about positive things. Encouraging them. Even when there are challenges, we should look at the brighter side. That yes, we're human beings, there will be challenges. But the possibility aspect is that what are we doing about them? And let's try and address them. Bring solution to what is best. Not because your own man is not there or you feel it's your tribe or religion that is not there. And then you feel you should bring everybody down just for your own benefit. I think it's very sad. And they should always understand that God Almighty, there is always a last day. Mm. When you die, you go and answer all those things. So it is not only here. You might think you are doing it and getting away with it here. It will always get back to you. I want to see that there is peace in Nigeria. Development is fully back. Everybody goes without being molested. I mean, when we are when we junior officers, we travel. We used to travel at night. It was the best time to travel. I want to see a Nigeria where our armed forces are well respected, well appreciated, and the armed forces also that is always there to assist Nigerians in whatever ways to draw. Uh, to win. and then want to see a Nigeria too that our political leaders also doing the right thing making sure that um, uh, we are progressing and we are developing just the way we are. God has blessed this country so much. Mm. If we put all our acts together, we will rule the world. I mean, growing up in Sokoto was, was, was good. We were immune from a lot of things I used. You know, coming to see, like I told you when I was growing up, I never knew what it was that you had an argument with your dad or with your mom. It was strange. Or that because everybody was there. You know, everybody was together. We grew up in a good home where there was love and respect for each other. The communities, we didn't know religion. It is now where some people are saying, oh, you are from this state, you are from... We never knew all those things. Because it was a community, and that's how we... And all the parents were watching out for... It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be your dad. Yes, if you are doing the wrong thing, my, friend, my dad's friend will be, flog you from there and send you back home. Even seeing himself, you know that you cannot do that. And, you know, we had that thing in our minds that you don't want to disappoint yourself or your parents or your community. Nobody wanted to do that. So, and that's what kept us going. And... That's why I was very happy to go back there again to be able to do that.